Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be performing our aqueous based organo zinc reaction experiment. In this experiment, we'll present a variation on the basic idea of a Grignard synthesis. This reaction results in the formation of a carbon to carbon bond, which is one of the most important categories of reactions in organic synthesis. The reaction presented will use zinc as the metal instead of magnesium, which allows the reaction to be conducted in a mixed organic aqueous solution. By eliminating much of the organic solvent, this method can be used to illustrate some of the principles of green chemistry in which the reaction conditions are less harmful to the environment than traditional methods. Let's get started. We will begin by preparing the activated zinc. To do this, we first need to weigh out approximately 1.31 grams of zinc powder and add it to a 10 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The mass of zinc powder that we will be using is 1.3109 grams. After adding the zinc powder to the Erlenmeyer flask, we will next add one milliliter of aqueous 5% hydrochloric acid solution to the zinc in the Erlenmeyer flask. We will then allow the mixture to stand for one to two minutes. And during this time period, you will notice the evolution of hydrogen gas. After the one to two minute time period, we will next transfer the zinc mixture to a Hirsch funnel and isolate the zinc by vacuum filtration. We will then rinse the zinc with one milliliter deionized water, followed by one milliliter of 95% ethanol, and then followed by one milliliter of diethyl ether. The activated zinc will then be ready to use for the procedure. I've transferred the activated zinc to a weigh boat and we will now begin the preparation and reaction of the organo zinc reagent. To start, we will add 10 milliliters of saturated aqueous ammonium chloride solution, the activated zinc and a stir bar to a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. I've attached the 25 milliliter round bottom flask to an air condenser and started continuously stirring the mixture. We next need to weigh out approximately 0.86 grams of three pentanone. The mass of three pentanone that we will be using is 0.8690 grams. We will next add the three pentanone and 1.6 milliliters of tetrahydrofuran to a test tube. We will then use a pasture pipette to transfer the mixture in the test tube down through the air condenser to the zinc ammonium chloride solution. We'll then allow the solution to stir for 10 to 15 minutes, giving time for the carbonyl compound to form a complex with the zinc. After stirring for 15 minutes, we next need to add approximately 2.4 grams of allyl bromide or 3-bromopropene to the stirring solution. Make sure that you dispense this reagent in the hood. The mass of allyl bromide that we will be using is 2.4395 grams. Next, using a pasture pipette, we will add the allyl bromide dropwise through the air condenser and allow the mixture to stir for one hour.
After stirring for one hour, I've detached the 25 milliliter round bottom flask from the air condenser and set up a vacuum filtration apparatus with a Hirsch funnel. We will next decant the liquid from the round bottom flask through the Hirsch funnel. We will then rinse the round bottom flask with one milliliter of diethyl ether and pour the rinse through the Hirsch funnel. We will then use a second one milliliter portion of diethyl ether to rinse the solid that has collected on the Hirsch funnel. We can then discard the solid. After vacuum filtration, we will next perform an extraction. We'll use a filter tip pipette to transfer the liquid from the vacuum filtration to a separatory funnel. We will then use one milliliter of diethyl ether to rinse the filter flask and transfer the rinse to the separatory funnel. We will then shake the separatory funnel gently to extract the organic material from the aqueous layer to the ether layer. We will drain the lower aqueous layer into a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and do not discard the aqueous layer. We will collect the upper organic layer in a separate 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And remember to collect the upper layer by pouring it from the top of the separatory funnel. We will return the aqueous layer to the separatory funnel and wash the aqueous layer with a fresh two milliliter portion of diethyl ether. We will allow the layers to separate and save the aqueous layer in the same 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask as before and combine the ether layer with this ether solution that was collected in the previous extraction. We'll repeat this extraction process of the aqueous phase one more time using a fresh two milliliter portion of diethyl ether. We will then dry the combined extract with three to four microspatulas of anhydrous sodium sulfate. While our organic layer continues to dry over an hydrosodium sulfate, we will pre-weigh a new 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The mass of the pre-weighed 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask is 26.6759 grams. We will next transfer the dry ether layer to the pre-weighed 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask using a filter tip pipette. We will then rinse the inside of the original Erlenmeyer flask with a small amount of diethyl ether 
and transfer that rinse to the freeway 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask as well. We will next evaporate the ether from the flask using a gentle stream of air. After completely evaporating off the diethyl ether, we next need to determine the mass of the freeway 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask plus the product. The mass of the freeway 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask plus the product is 27.5556 grams. Okay, students, you can now determine the percent yield and analyze the IR spectrum of our product. This concludes the aqueous-based organozinc reaction experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.